there, guys and girls. Welcome to Mixed Media Salad, a channel created for you, by you. And today we're going to be covering a topic that comes from the Affinity Designer Forum. Now, one of the users in the forum was wondering, how do I take my images and shade them using the vector tools? Now, if you're not familiar with Affinity Designer, it is a vector-based application that does have some uh, pixel-based tools in it to help uh, artists and designers create vector artwork, okay? So I'm gonna do a demonstration. There's various ways of shading objects within Affinity Designer. And today I'm going to focus just on using gradient tools to shade objects, okay? So I got a little file here set up. Um, all I have here is a green background. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna draw a pool ball, okay? And this is, of course, the table. So let's get right into it, right? So I'm gonna grab a circle here and I'm gonna drag that circle out like so. And I'm gonna make it black, okay? And we're gonna draw the eight ball specifically. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my snapping on here so I could snap everything to the center, okay? And I'm gonna draw another circle here. I'm gonna drag that out. About that size is fine. And I'm gonna make that white, okay? I'm gonna hit V on my keyboard and I'm gonna center that as well. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab a text tool, the art text tool, and I'm gonna drag out a drag out a little box here, and I'm gonna put it eight. Okay, font's fine, Arial's fine for this. Um, I don't think we need anything else. Okay, oh, let me just go back here, and I'm just gonna get my move tool. All right, and I'm gonna select my A, move tool, A, sorry, and lock that into the center. Okay. <clears throat> so there's our eight ball, okay? And actually, I, I prefer this to be a little bit bigger here. That feels better, right? Yeah, that feels much better. I'm gonna just center it there. <clears throat> okay, so we have an eight ball here. Pretty simple, right? I think anybody can make this shape, but to really make this look real, we need to add light to it, okay? So shading is basically taking light, and we're gonna draw a light object. We're gonna say this is gonna be our light, okay? And I'm gonna go here into the effects, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm gonna hit Gaussian Blur, and I'm gonna just turn that up. Okay, so that'll be our light source, all right? That's gonna define our light source. So it's coming from the top, we'll say it's maybe from behind, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this object and we're gonna use the gradient tool, and we're gonna describe how light would fall across this surface, okay? So the closer, the object is to the light source, the more intense the light is, and the farther it gets away, the lighter it is, okay? So let's go ahead here, and I'm gonna put the source here, okay? And, whoops, let me do this again, like so. Okay, I'm gonna drag that across, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pick this here, and you know what? I'm gonna do something a little bit more interesting than this, the plain white light. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make this light pink, okay? So I'm gonna go back to my gradient tool and I'm gonna make this point pink because the color of our light is pink, right? And it's gonna go into black, okay? Now, we're gonna move this black point I'm gonna say about here, and we're gonna make the fall off of the range here. So we kind of have this little hot area right here because it's, that's where it's closest to the light, and that's where you'll get the most light on that object. Okay, whoops, there we go. Okay, so that's looking pretty good there, right? But if we have light here, then that means this side is in shadow, 
okay? And it also, it still looks like it's flat, okay? So we're gonna do something else here. We're gonna do a little visual trick. <clears throat> and I'm gonna drag out a circle, like so, and I'm gonna fill it with black, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do with that circle is, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit effects. I'm gonna turn on the Gaussian blur, and I'm gonna turn that up a bit. Maybe about so, okay? And place it right about here. Sounds good, right? And then I'm gonna go here to the opacity of the layers and kind of turn that down because it's not that bright and the shadow needs to be in front. And let's go ahead and put this little shadow. Let's, gonna, let's turn it into a slight angle here. Okay, and the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm also defining where this light is coming from. By turning this angle, it shows that it's more back here rather than directly to the side where this thing would be lit directly here. It's actually showing that it's up here. So I'm gonna just move this out just so we don't get distracted. Now that looks pretty good, right? But we're still not quite there. So what I would do is there's another element of light where it's not only just lighting this object, but it actually is lighting this whole scene. Okay, and you're, you're getting some of the ambient light hitting across the whole object. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use my same light source. I'm gonna drag that over. I'm gonna go over here to layers, and I'm gonna drag this right below everything, okay? And I'm gonna shrink it down like I did the shadow. Extend it out. And I'm gonna turn that just a tad too. Okay. Oh, actually, I just took away my whole entire light source. So I wanna drag a copy of that. So I'm gonna hold down the option key and I'm gonna drag that out. Okay, and we'll go through those steps again. And I'm gonna take this and drag this below like so, and then I'm gonna shrink this down, and I'm gonna stretch it out, okay? So it's also lighting this area. And me squishing it down here kinda shows that there's more of a plane that's going on here, right? Okay, so it can't be as bright as the actual source itself, okay? Because as light makes the distance from the source to the surface, it actually loses intensity. So we're gonna turn that down just a tad, okay? Good, now that's looking better, right? So we kinda have an idea here. Now I'm gonna do something else here to this object. I'm gonna use, I used a, a, a linear gradient on this, but I'm gonna change this to a radial gradient, okay? And I'm gonna just go ahead and stretch this out a bit. Because our, our light source is, I'm, I'm making it a little bit round. A light source could be different shapes, but I'm making it round, so more like a spotlight, okay? So it would have this curve to it, okay? So that's looking better. That's looking more like it. But now there's another element that happens here. Since this light is actually filling this space, right, with this additional ambient light, what's happening too is you're gonna get a little bit of what is called a bounce light, right, right here. So I'm gonna take a copy here just so I don't have to keep creating the same effect, right? And, oops, I'm gonna grab my move tool. I'm gonna grab this light source here by holding option and dragging it over and I'm gonna shrink it down, okay? And I'm gonna actually shrink it to maybe maybe about that size there or so. And we'll maybe have to make a few more adjustments, but about that size, okay? And I'm gonna change that color from the pink to more of a green, okay? And actually, let's use the same green as our background, okay? It wouldn't be some other foreign green. And I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna hit Apple X to cut it. And then I'm gonna select the eight ball background, right? I'm gonna select it, and I'm gonna hit, uh, I think it's um, Command, Option, and V. 
And what that is is paste inside. And you can actually reach that from up here, from the edit window. And again, the power of that light shouldn't be so intense. So we're gonna change the opacity down. The only way that light would be that intense is if there were actually a light below it lighting it. But all we want is just a kind of hint of a bounce light. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so we have our little bounce light here. That's looking pretty good, right? So a little bounce light and it's coming from the surface. It's bouncing up here. Now, this object is still looking kind of flat, okay? So, uh, and when I say flat, I mean, we do have the shaded value, but the material doesn't feel shiny like a eight ball would feel, okay? So I'm gonna draw another circle, okay? Like so. I'm gonna hold down the shift key to constrain that circle. I'm gonna hit the V key to move. And I'm gonna turn that circle into pure white, okay? And then again, I'm gonna grab my gradient tool, okay? And I'm gonna actually put the white point up here and this point down here. And that white point, I'm gonna select it by clicking on that little dot and I'm gonna actually make it the pink because that's the color of our light, right? And you know what? No, I'm gonna leave it white. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave it white. And I'm gonna leave this slight gradient color here, this little transition. Now I'm gonna go to another tool and it's the transparency tool, okay? And I'm gonna draw transparency across that shape. Okay, and then I'm gonna switch the mode to screen, like so, okay? And I'm just gonna back down on the opacity just a tad, like so. Okay, and so basically what I've, what I've drawn there, and I'm just gonna, oops, I'm gonna move this into place. Basically what I've drawn there is what is called the specular light, okay? So that's that little bright hot light that you see on plastic materials, shiny materials. And that is creating the illusion that this object here looks like it, it's shiny. Like so, okay? So that's one way of actually creating gradients. And I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this turn this off because we were just using that as visual representation, but it doesn't help the art. So that's one way of using gradients to shade an object. I'm gonna do another video at another time to explain how you can use other techniques to shade objects, but the way that light falls on a hard surface is the same as how light would fall on a organic surface. It's just that how the light is bounced around on an organic surface is different and it creates interesting pools of lights and different shapes and shades. So, <clears throat> excuse me, keep that in mind, okay? But uh, if you have any questions, Post them in the comments. You could tweet me at Mixed Media Salad, or you can send me an email. And I would love to see how you guys apply this. So let's just go ahead and take this same idea. And instead of using uh, an eight ball, let's use uh, the one ball, which, no, let's use, yeah, the one ball, or I think the five ball is red. Okay, maybe use a red color, use some other colors and apply those same techniques on those balls. And if you have any questions about that and you're having issues, again, just tweet me or email me. Okay, so again, guys, thanks again for listening. This is Mixed Media Salad, a channel created for you, by you. And I look forward to sharing more information and answering your questions. So send me an email if you have a question and I'll try to give you an example of how to do things inside your application of choice. Today, it was Affinity Designer. If you like this video and you found it helpful, please hit the subscribe button.